Welcome to Falcons Audible, presented by AT&T. I'm Dave Archer, and I've got two heavy hitters with me. I've got Tori McElhaney, and I've got DJ Shockley. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to get <laughs> yeah, you yeah. covered on free agency today because yeah. there's a lot going on with this team, guys. We talked a little bit about the quarterback. We'll revisit what we talked about a little bit with Kirk Cousins because there's more to talk about there. But there's been a bunch of guys that have come in and joined this football team in a number of different areas. We'll try to dive into all that for you and give you kind of some clarity as to what that makes that depth chart look like. And maybe we get Tori and Shock to tell us who we're going to draft with the number eight pick. Mm. I don't know. I, I mean, I have ready. to make eight <laughs> mock drafts. I keep yeah. telling people, I'm like, at some point, I'll put out a mock draft that has the guy you want me to take. Yeah. But I got to do eight of these. So just be patient. I'll take somebody, you know, that you want. I'll take Dallas Turner at some point. There Give me a go. break. Tori, Tori. Pull it back. First off, uh, we know you're not a stranger to the podcast world. Right, yeah. But we want to welcome you into Falcons Aww. Audible. You know, Thanks, you guys. Sit in for our guy, Rack. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. you do a great job for the Falcons. Well, in so. all honesty, I, I think we've, we've upgraded. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't clip that for Rack. Don't clip it for Rack. Um, <laughs> so let's, let's, let's just jive into it, guys. Yeah. Uh, Kurt Cousins, uh, obviously the biggest free agent signing probably in the National Football League. I don't think that's that's – uh, un- unfair to say, Tori? No, I think that's totally fair. I mean, it's the one move that I felt like was bigger than all the rest. And when you knew that the Falcons were coming into this offseason, it's like they have to have a starting quarterback. That's what's blatantly obvious from the moment the 2023 season ended. And because of that, it was kind of like, okay, what direction are they going to go in? And Arch, I know we talked about it on our last podcast but to me if I'm looking at what the moves of this free agency was for the Falcons the word that kind of comes to mind is enlightening Mm -hmm. I felt like we learned a lot about one how the Falcons view themselves and what they needed in the moment how close they feel like they are to kind of being there being where they want to be and and putting together a team that they feel can go out and be successful and a bit the first linchpin of that the first domino to fall of that was going out and getting someone like Kirk Cousins who you know can come in immediately and you hope can make a difference offensively. Chuck, I know you had a chance to sit down with him with Fox 5 and you guys sat down and talked a little bit about him coming here, the background he has with the city. Why should Falcon fans be excited about Kirk Cousins being an Atlanta Falcon? 1-8, one eight. Uh, let's start there, yeah. my man. Uh, <laughs> rocking to eighteen yeah. now. Okay. Uh, you know what? I, I think Tori just used the word enlightened, and I think the word that comes to mind for me is rejuvenation. Mm-hmm. And when I think about that, you think about you guys are all using the some big words, man. All, I mean, come well, on, yeah. we got to bring. I mean, I know yeah. you got one. There. Come on, come on. I get to talk to you all the time, so I know about it. Uh, but yeah, you, you think about adding a guy like Kirk Cousins, and we're going to talk about some of the other pieces you added to, but when you think about adding a guy who's been in the league 12 years, who has had the success he's had, and think about what he will bring to this organization, I think that's the biggest piece that I think they wanted to make sure that they got right. And I think you you, you opened up by saying, hey, one of the biggest you know, storylines of this offseason has been signing Kirk Cousins. And when you sign a guy like Kirk, you know exactly what he's about. You know he's a leader for one. You talk to him, you notice a guy who has uh, an idea of where he wants his career to go. He has an idea of how he wants this organization to look, how he wants to be as a player. And I think that's number one that you got to like about him is the guy came in with a clear-cut idea of Mm. where he wants to take these last maybe few years of his career saying he wants to retire as a Falcon. That was big. Um You hear him talk throughout his presser, and he talked about the nuances of understanding his teammates, wanting to have a deeper dive into who they are as well as what they do well. Uh, I heard you guys talk about it and talk about some of the things he talked about he wanted to do with his teammates and all that kind of stuff. And to take it one step further, the fact of him talking about, all right, let's say if you got this corner out and you run it at this certain angle, why did you run it there? Not just, okay, you look good running there. That's a good job putting it there, but I understand it. But why did you do it? I think that goes so much deeper into understanding your teammates and that continuity that you got to build. But this is a guy that has done it, uh, you know, seven years of, you know, at least 4,000 yards, eight seasons of 25 touchdowns or more, uh, never thrown more than 14 interceptions in a season. Uh, it just speaks to a lot of things that – you like from this guy and he's one of those kind of guys that I think from day one when we heard Arthur Blank talk uh, after the season and you heard Ra talk after the season when he first when he first came on the one thing they talked about was this is a roster that is ready to go win right now 
and you need that guy in place to take that next step. And Kirk Cousins, whether you know people want to admit it or not, or whether you you know we're gonna keep it one hundred, is an upgrade from what we've had in the building, and he has shown that over twelve years. So I love the fact that they went out and got the guy that they wanted. A guy that fit yeah. this system. A guy that is from day one, they said, is an elite processor. A guy who makes good decisions. A guy who is accurate with the football. A guy who plays on time within your offense. And those are things that you like to see from uh, your, your your QB1, I should yeah. say. So it, it's going to be fun to see this all you know, kind of transpire. And obviously, we got to get on the field. We got to see it happen. You got to see it go on the game. But right now, everything points to this is the ideal fit for what the Falcons wanted. Kirk talked about alignment. He talked about the owner, the GM, the coach, and the quarterback all being aligned. He felt like that was something that was in place here, and he was excited about that. You mentioned process and decision-making. That was something that Raheem Morris mentioned in his opening press conference. You and I talked about that, Mm -hmm. about being able to process stuff, make quick decisions, get the ball out on time. Those are things – in in keeping it 100, we have not had. For sure. We have not had here. Taking care of the football. He's a 3-1 to one interception to touchdown – or a touchdown to interception ratio guy over his last six seasons. I mean, you can go into the numbers. He's number eight all time. All time in passing against pressure. Mm. He's one of the top five play action guys. Mm. B. John Robinson and Tyler Algier are being guys he's going to play action off of. If there's anybody going to, you're going to bite on somebody, those are two running backs you're going to bite on no the way this team is running. So all that being said, I'm Kirk curious Cousins, too. I want to ask because yeah. there was something that kept coming up over the course of this offseason at the beginning where it's like Raw and Terry both said we want to be aggressive in going after a quarterback. To me, this actually was the safest choice that they could make to go after someone who you know exactly what you're getting with Kirk Cousins. Yes, he's coming off of an Achilles injury, and there are some unknowns with that. But in terms of like a guy who is ready made to come in and change the scope of what you can do offensively immediately, there is a safety net almost built in, I think, with Kirk Cousins and what he could be. How and- much, how much, and that's a good point, Tori. How much did. Raheem's history with Matt Ryan, because mm-hmm. you brought this up last time we had a chance to talk. How much did that shape this? Because right. you knew what you were going to get when number two stepped on the field. And this guy's a, a similar guy. And I'm trying, I don't want to say that, hey, Matt Ryan's being, being brought back. It's, this is, Kirk Cousins is his own guy. Yeah. And in a lot, of, a lot of situations, you can look at some of the ratings and the numbers and and it may be a little bit of a step up in 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 his efficiency at the quarterback position, but how much did that play into this? I mean, I I think it had to, right? Like going back to what I was saying, it's like you needed, and what y'all have been saying too, you needed a certain sense of stability at the quarterback position that you haven't had in a long time. And I know that I've I've said this time and time again. I don't think people knew what they what type of stability and consistency that they had in Matt Ryan until he was gone. And and I know that there are always going to be people who. That Matt Ryan wasn't their cup of tea. There's always going to be a loud faction of mm-hmm. individuals who that's the case. But I don't think you can look at what Matt Ryan did in Atlanta and discredit it. And I think from the past two seasons of going through this with Marcus Mariota, Desmond Ritter, Taylor Heineke, nothing against those guys, but there wasn't that consistency. Mm-hmm. There wasn't that level of stability. And Kirk Cousins over 12 seasons in the league has provided that for two organizations. Mm-hmm. And, and you kind of have that expectation that that's going to be the same, you hope, when he comes here in Atlanta. One thing that came to mind when both of you guys were talking about Kirk and some of the things that he's brought here, and the one thing I think everybody made a uh, – not a joke about, but everybody talked about the one word that was used in the press conference all the time, which was collaboration. Yeah. and Continuity. Continuity, yeah, collaboration, yeah. all that coming yeah. together. And, Arch, you mentioned it about what Kirk said about, hey, the owner, the GM, the head mm-hmm. coach, uh, everybody on the same page. And without even saying the word, I felt like Kirk was saying that in his press conference about – his teammates, about the coaching staff, about how we all have to get that continuity and we have to collaborate together. And it it, and it, and it, it kind of tells you that everybody from Arthur Blank to Raheem to Terry, they had an idea of the kind of guy they wanted. And then you bring in this guy and he's speaking kind of the same language without even saying it. And that's the kind of thing you got to like is they're already – having that continuity together and understand what's it going to take to be successful. And I think they have already taken the steps. And he's, you know, I was excited to hear him say, you know what, I, I want to be ready to go by the end of the summer. Yeah. You know, I'm working my tail off. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to. 
And I want to get in there with these guys, not just on the field. I want to make sure that I get to know these guys off the field and know what makes them tick. So that collaboration, that continuity that he's already trying to build, that the guys up here have already said this is what we need, and then you're bringing your quarterback who's speaking the same language, you're already heading in the right direction. Yeah, collaboration, continuity. Hey, this just in, this is the greatest team sport of all time. Not one guy is going to step on the field no way. and make those plays. So let's transition to some of the guys that are going to make plays mm-hmm. around Kirk Cousins, and namely at the wide receiver core. Atlanta goes out and makes a uh, makes a really good deal with Darnell Mooney. Uh, let's talk about Mooney and his ability to affect the game. If you watch, go put a highlight tape onto this guy. Dude has got an incredible catch radius. He's got speed to burn. Uh, he's got a, He's got tremendous hand-eye coordination, whatever you want to look at. Torrey, Darnell Mooney and adding him to this receiver receiver room, What is that? how does that change the dynamic? So, uh, honestly, before we start talking about Darnell just specifically, I kind of want to pull back a little bit okay. and, and look at the moves that the Falcons made from a totality at wide receiver. Because okay. that was something, I think that when you look at one guy like Darnell Mooney going out and getting Rondell Moore, going out and getting Ray Ray McLeod, to me, it showed a very obvious difference from mm-hmm. what the previous staff wanted in their receivers and what this staff values in their receivers. You're talking about the last two years we've been talking about how big these receivers are in Atlanta, how tall, how long. You you look at the prototype of being like 6'2", 6'3". Now, all of these guys are under six foot. All of them, I'm pretty sure, ran under Speed. yeah under yeah. a 4'4'5", when they were at the Combine, whenever whatever years they were in. And that, to me, is... So it, it it's a marker to me of what a Zach Robinson offense could look like and what they're prioritizing. And Darnell Mooney was kind of the first, I guess, domino to fall. Mm. Because this is a guy who you look at that prototype, you look at kind of what a Sean McVay, a, a Zach Robinson offense could look like. And someone like Darnell Mooney is someone who, very different from kind of some of the receivers that we've seen in this in an Arthur Smith system, now more than anything the moves of this wide receiver room dictate the differences in scheme in my opinion yeah i don't think there's any question and shock i want i want to go directly to that so really good way of putting it uh, tory let's encompass the guys and all of them together mm-hmm. because there is a, an ability to really affect a an opposition or a defense based on how you deploy them. We yeah. talked mm-hmm. a little bit about some of the things I was watching on tape with the Rams in the playoffs, yeah. where obviously Zach was the pass game coordinator, where they got a bunch right, tight in, tight left, and they've got Cooper Cup in the backfield. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many times did we see Puka Nakua carry the ball on a jet sweep? And mm-hmm. here he is, a receiver got, he would catch 150, 120 balls down the field. Yeah. So the ability to use d- multiple guys, Rondell Moore, um, Darnell Mooney, uh, Ray Ray McLeod, some of these guys that can be put in the game and put in the backfield. So I, talk to me about that and the ability, for, like Tori's talking about, the versatility of what this offense is going to look like under Zach Robinson. The ability to make it look so different to a defense, I think, is critical in you come personnel. You can have 11 personnel, you can have 12, you can have 10, and it can look like so many different things. And you come onto the field and the defense has two seconds to the match and say, okay, this guy's here, this guy's there. And then, oh, let's motion B. John out the backfield. Now it changes everything. I think having these caliber and style of players – allows you to do exactly what you want to do in this offense, which is you want to be very aggressive vertically, Mm -hmm. but you also have the opportunity to be really good in space. You got a guy like Ray Ray and Rondell who are really good in space who can make it very hard on the defense. And then you add Bijan to it, you add Kyle to it, you add Drake to it, and it adds a different dimension to this offense that says, all right, no matter how you line up, we're going to be able to find the matchup that's advantageous for us. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's really crucial is in this game, trying to find those key matchups, trying to find guys who have the speed, who can push the field vertically, yeah. but also I can dump it to them on an option round. They can make a couple guys miss, and boom, we got 10, 12-yard game. These are the type of playmakers. And you, you look at Darnell Moves, a full 3 8 guy coming out of two lane. We've seen what Ray Ray and what you know Rondell can do in a special teams game. We've seen what they can do in space with the ball in their hands. These are all guys that absolutely at any given time can stretch the field vertically but also can stretch it horizontally. And then you got other guys around that can add other pieces to it like a Bijan, like a Drake and everybody that comes into it. But then 
You got the guy who can get them the football too. Mm-hmm. You talked about the quick decision. Talk about getting the football out. You have a guy in Kirk Cousins who understands matchup, understands the game. I was watching something with um, with Minnesota the other day, and they got Jordan Allison coming out of the backfield, and he's running a wheel right down the middle, and you got one guy in the middle of the field of safety. You got to find a way to beat him down the sideline. He throws a perfect ball to him. Those are some of the things that mm-hmm. they're gonna turn on the table and say, okay. He likes this. He likes that. He understands. There are a lot of bunch sets you talked about that you used in Minnesota with the three-by-ones that gives an indication of who's going to be that matchup you like. And he absolutely crushed it. So there's going to be so many opportunities, I think, in his offense to – exploit a defense right. in so many different ways with the players you got. I think you make a good point, too, about the ability to stretch the field because I feel like, and you know, I would love y'all's opinion on this, too, because I feel like that was maybe something that the Falcons were missing in the last couple of years is the ability to, to sure. stretch the field and, and, you know, have plays beyond – Honestly, I know like Drake London can can book it down the field and you can toss. But that's the one. It. That's the only guy you really talk about the, for real, right? Yeah. Exactly. And so you're you kind of were missing that extra layer of ability to be able to do that. And I think with Darnell Mooney, and I I believe that if I'm thinking about the right like graphic, I believe that he with the Bears had one of the most like honestly he on the long ball specifically he was one of the most accurate pass catchers for the Bears, not just the Bears, but I think in the league as well, and and beyond 20 yards downfield. That matters for this team that I think at times over the last couple of years has struggled kind of building upon explosive plays, not just building upon explosive plays but scoring touchdowns, you know, when they get inside the 20. And so... Yeah, I think the element, the element of being able to throw it down the field, and I think that's part of what you're alluding to, Mm -hmm. Tori, is if I'm a defense, I wasn't overly concerned about Atlanta running anybody by me. Right. Yeah, you can keep okay. I mean, front. Pitts yeah. might run one down through the middle, but I've got a guy maybe trailing Pitts. Maybe maybe we sent Drake. We didn't really have anybody run by anybody. Now, if I'm on defense and I'm looking at the tape and I see Mooney blowing down the field on on some kind of route, and by the way, his route integrity and how he runs routes is outstanding. Rondell Moore has got big speed; mm-hmm. he can run. You mix that in with with trying to prepare for this offense. Now all of a sudden, the element of striking down mm. the field is there, right, Shock? So, oh, no doubt. but the thing that most of these games boil down to is guys being able to make plays in space. How many different times we talk about, hey, where's the next Debo Samuel? Where's the next guy that can catch the ball underneath? These guys can all stretch it like you're talking about, Tori, but they also can catch the ball short, bubble screen, shallow drag route, whatever it might be, and all of a sudden they turn a five-yard throw into a 70-yard play or a 50-yard play. So not only do you have the ability to, to stretch defenses and and threaten them and make them defend the back end, you also have the ability to drop it off and have guys make big plays. Nothing likes a quarterback like oh, no more doubt. than a five-yard route to turn no into a 70-yard play. <laughs> oh, no doubt. It, it, it's like having a good run game for a quarterback. You have right. guys who you can hand it off to and you can make three, four yards out of nothing. You got guys on the outside who – you could just dump it down to, like Archer's mentioned, and be able to make something happen with it. And that's, I think, the nature of this league. And that's why you think about some of the top receivers in the game when they have the football in their hands. It's usually they're doing great things after the catch. Mm-hmm. And that's what you want. You want to be able to, you know, find the matchup you like. You got one-on-one. You're playing man coverage in this league. You expect your guy to go win. And then when he wins, make something happen. I think that's why you look around and you look at some of the greats around the National Football League now and you see him running away from guys or you see him making guys miss. I think that's why people look at a guy like Tyreek Hill so much because if he catches a slant, he catches a hitch, he got a chance to go at any time. Yeah. And it doesn't happen just to be a go route. And you can look at a guy like Rondell Moore who's in that same kind of mode and has that same kind of build that if you give him a chance – he might go. So and I'll tell you what that can, you. that can do to you as a defensive coordinator. Now you're thinking, okay, do I am I willing to play man coverage mm-hmm. against these guys? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because if this guy gets clean and they throw a crossing route to him, he's going to go because I got guys that are following other people. Do I have to play more zone? So now all of a sudden, as an offense, you're dictating to a defense how you're going to play. Yeah. And that's what Zach Robinson's trying to do, not only with the personnel, with the deployment, all that kind of stuff, but just the ability of the players to kind of dictate on the other side of the ball. Okay, add, add Charlie Warner to that, a tight end, who I think is going to help in the blocking game. He's also mm-hmm. going to help on special teams. He's a guy that, that, that is accomplished. He can catch the football if he needs to. Obviously, you got Kyle Pitts as your outstanding tight end. Kadero Hodge, mm-hmm. add him in. Outstanding special Veteran. teams yeah. player, right. Tori. This is yeah. a guy that's kind of a core guy. Mm-hmm. I think we forget about that side we of the We do, ball. and I think some, – I can't remember who made this point to me a couple of days ago, but they, they were like, if you need somebody who can just go out – 
15 yards downfield, make a catch, keep moving. That's Kadero Hodge. Like, yep. he has been incredibly, I think, almost to the point of – I use the word reliable a lot with Kadero, and he's shown it. It's why they keep bringing him back. But to the going back to your point, too, about Charlie Warner and going back to all of the things that we can now see the Falcons may be able to do in terms of spreading out defenses and, and making them kind of play on their heels a little bit, how much does that impact what they're able to do in a run game that is already very successful? When you pull it back and you kind of see and you give you give Tyler Algier – Tyler Algier doesn't even need a mm-hmm. hole. Mm-mm. This he man is – his yeah. yards after con, initial <laughs> contact is outsane. But then you have Bajon Robinson who has the same playmaking ability where sometimes guys can't even touch him because of what he can do in space. So – we're talking about these receivers and what they can do, but as I'm sitting here thinking about like <laughs> Charlie Warner blocking, it's like if Charlie Warner gets one block downfield, it's like Bajon Robinson may be gone 15, 20 yards. And here's the other part about this. We, we talk about a guy like Kadero Hodge, a guy like Charlie Warner. You need guys on the team who understand their role. Mm, like yeah. there are so many guys who, of course, you, you all want to be the playmaker. You want to make plays. You want to catch football. You want to do things for your, for your team. But there's other times where – I remember you coming into a meeting room and you turn on the tape and it's a guy pancaking a guy. Mm. It's a guy springing a guy for a big run. Mm-hmm. And you got a guy who's doing his job. He's on the backside of it and he cuts it off. And that's the reason why the cutback was there. There's so many guys that's going to be on this team, like a Charlie Warner, mm-hmm. like a Cadero Hodge. Uh, I remember last year, you wouldn't see Cordero Hodge for three, four games, and then all of a sudden here he has three, four catches right. in a ball game. He has a couple big first downs. Big catches, too. And then boom, yeah. there you go. That's what you needed. And, and he I, had the – I will say this. He had the um, average, best average for uh, yards per catch. I think it was like 16.6. It led the team yep. last year. So it goes back to that whole, like, reliability point for sure, as well. Yeah, for yeah for the sure. monster grab. Speaking no of pancaking, guys, Storm Norton re-signed to the Storm. team as well. <laughs> we start talking about depth. Yeah. How many times yeah. does Storm Norton step in on either side no to play some offensive tackle? I think that's a great get there. It's a guy that understands what's going to be expected of him. You mentioned uh, filling in the role, but he's going yep. to play your swing tackle. Love that. Lot of, lot, how many times do you go through a season where you don't have an offensive lineman get hurt? Rarely right. happens, especially at that offensive Did tackle position. Yeah. Big addition, six foot seven, 320-pound Storm Norton back on this football team I remember as I was a talking, swing tackle. T- sorry to interrupt, but I remember talking to Dwayne Ledford a couple weeks ago about what the goal for this offensive line should be in 2024. And he made such a good point because he was like, we know what the starting five is. They've played together. They have a lot of time together. They understand what to do together. Now it's about building depth behind mm-hmm. them because you, like what you're saying, you're never going to get to a point where you have all five for every single game, every single rep, every single snap. That's um, that's non-existent in this league. So the fact that they went out and brought back a guy like Storm Norton. And also, I think we're missing, too, Ryan Newsel. He's back yeah, as well. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. These, yeah, News these, played quite a bit. Right. These are guys who had significant reps in depth. Like, that, I can't wait to see kind of how Dwayne Ledford – honestly like takes this starting five to the next level but how he has this goal of like okay it's beyond them too it's the storm nortons it's the ryan noozles the, the, the one thing that comes to mind for me is one guy i think about when you guys talk about adding depth and having a guy and it's on the other side of the ball mm-hmm. and we talk so much about the preseason and how much it means and trying to find this depth and find these guys and when you put them in then obviously they can still fill that void and play to a high level and it's a reason why you want these guys on your team like a Storm Norton. What about Nate Lambman last year? Yeah. What if you didn't yeah. have him? You yeah. know, he was a coming into the season, thought, oh, he's a depth guy, he's played some, but it wasn't really having that role Balled and, out. and Balled came out. in and was a big time player yeah. when Troy went down. So you gotta love those type of guys who when given their opportunity when needed to step in and fill a role, they fill a role. And I think Storm's that kind of guy. Yeah, and, and in all honesty, now, and we're, we'll, I'll ask this question at the end here, from a when you begin to evaluate what you're looking at in late a- April, because of the way Nate Landon played, because mm-hmm. of the way Storm Norton played, and, and the next guy I'm going to bring up, uh, Contavia Street, a guy Same you there, added yeah. because of injury, who's a depth guy. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, now you can kind of muddy the water for everybody else. Where's Atlanta going? Mm-hmm. What are they going to do? Um, but let's talk Contavious Street real quickly. Um, Contavious is back. He got hurt late in the year, came in because of some injuries. And I thought that he really did a nice job, Tori, yeah. filling in. 
from a depth standpoint, um, the flexibility that he, he gives you. You're never going to replace someone like Grady Jarrett. Yeah, like that's right. that's never going to happen. He is the heart, soul, everything that you need in a defender and a leader on your team. You're never going to find that outside of Grady Jarrett in the way that Grady Jarrett provides it. So it was never, for Contavious Street, it was never about being Grady Jarrett. And when David Onyemata was going through his ankle injury, it was never mm-hmm. about being David Onyemata. Mm-hmm. It was just making sure that there wasn't this like significant drop-off in play from mm-hmm. this defensive front. And if you go back and look at the numbers from from this defense, especially in, in the run game, you didn't really see that much of a difference. And and I think that's all you can kind of ask for. And I, I really liked the the thought that it's like, okay, yes, Contavious Street is somebody who – Let's be honest, over the course of his time in the league has been injured for a lot of it. This w- this was finally, I really did feel like this past year, his early time with Philadelphia, and then the back half of the year with Atlanta, he was really like coming into his own and, and really kind of finding a niche in, in what he does best. And, you know, as they're moving kind of to a 3-4, which I know we can talk, you know, defensive scheme all day long, and sometimes it I, I feel like it doesn't matter sometimes. Like, you're going to put Grady Jarrett on the field even though he's not, like, a yeah. true nose tackle. Yeah. Like, But for a guy like Contavious Street to have this reassurance that, like, we liked what we saw to mm. you f- from you in five games, we're bringing you back. Like, th- in five games. That's all he played for this and team. And then he had the most iconic celebration. I mean, come on. Oh. Remember the, the former recovery right. goes <laughs> slide versus Minnesota, matter of fact. <laughs> Slides in the end zone with his <laughs> arm behind his head. Like just, I mean, come on. It's it's like, so good. Yeah, yeah, anytime a big guy can pull out. Yeah. <laughs> but Contavious Street, as you mentioned, didn't play a ton for the team, but for them, for him to have done enough in the minutes that he got mm-hmm. to play, for him to impress a brand new staff, Jimmy Lake coming in, you got uh, yeah. you got uh, uh, Raheem Morris, who's going to be very much tied to that defense. They loved what they saw there. Remember, this is a this is a group that's been coaching Aaron Donald and some right. people like that. So when you begin to look at at their impressions of what Contavious Street brought to the table, it's a big deal. And here's the other part you think about too. You you remember Lef- talk about Leffert? Yeah. How many times you think Raheem went to him and said, "Hey." Who gave you some fits in practice? Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. you look at a game and say, oh, you didn't have the numbers, this didn't show up. But there's so much other things that go into a decision of, okay, can this guy fit we want to do? What kind of guy is he? And you say, okay, well, this guy gave us a lot of fits in practice. This guy was a guy who was you know, a penetrator. This guy that, you know, stood his ground. He, you know, didn't let the lineman get up on backers. Those are the kind of things that you look at and say, all right, this is a guy that we can use because we got a guy who know him, who's winning against our offensive line that gives you that credibility and says, all right, this is why we know we could give that to him. Maybe the numbers don't show it in a game. Mm-hmm. Maybe he had, you know, three or four games where, you know, he didn't do much. But you look at some of the things that he can do in practice, mm-hmm. it gives you an advantage. All right, last thing on Falcons Audible here presented by AT&T. Does this clear up the picture for you guys at all as to what late April looks like on that Thursday night when Atlanta approaches the podium? Oh, big, big, deep breath right there. I'm going to say yes. But the thing is, is I have been saying this team needs to draft an edge rusher in the first round for the last three years, and they've never, they've not done it. This regime has not done it. They have valued offensive weapons, the quote unquote best player available Mm -hmm. at the spot that they're picking. So even though I'm sitting here saying, like, yeah, it's a no brainer, they're going to go edge rusher in the first round, I can't, like, truly in my heart of hearts fully believe that because I do we talked about this the other day I sure. really like this wide receiver group I really do I, I like how deep it is I like the idea of but the thing is is like because it's so deep it's like do you not gamble but to a certain extent gamble like waiting for one of these guys to fall into the second round you have the option too. I mean to move back in up into the first if you really truly felt like you needed to to get one of these receivers so for that I'm I do lean edge rusher and <laughs> I know this is probably going to be a hot take too I also kind of lean cornerback as well yeah, I, I do I still think that that the edge and cornerback because of all of the moves in free agency that the Falcons have made to rebuild and essentially or not rebuild but restock this wide receiver room and obviously quarterback with Kirk Cousins I I th- there hasn't been a lot of defensive moves that that's not happened to this point outside of bringing back Nate Lamon and Contavious Street so I'm 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 really ready for the Falcons to make a splash <laughs> defensive <laughs> Yeah, I, I, it, I, I, it's interesting, really, real quick, Shock. <laughs> it's interesting that you make that analogy because look at last season. 
okay, last season in free agency, defense dominated. Right. For sure. The draft was the offensive mm-hmm. side of the football, right? Uh, you had the running back and lineman come off the First, board right away. Yeah. Okay. We're flipping the script. Right, exactly. All <laughs> offensive guys in free agency. Does that mean can the fan, Chuck, can the fans say this is the year Atlanta's going to attack the defense <laughs> in the draft? I think you can. And I think it goes back to the last two, three years under Terry. It's been best player available versus need. They did not need Bajon Robinson. Exactly. You know, when so you look, yeah, when you looked at that fifty-three man roster yeah. when the draft started, they did not need Bajon Robinson. Tyler coming off a thousand yards. They yeah. did not. I mean, I will say this too: I don't think they needed Drake London when they got him. They didn't need Kyle Pitts when they got him at number four overall. They've never been the the type to really be like, oh, like we have to get right. this guy because we desperately need an edge rusher. We desperately need a receiver. Like that's never been this regime. But does but does this draft does the position you're at now give you best play available and need exactly at the same well, time and, and that's a great analogy and we're going to believe me this is not the next time gonna see <laughs> we're going to we're so gonna, we'll be back and we're going to talk draft <laughs> we know we're about a month away and we're really itching to get to that piece of it but it does give you a little intrigue it gives you an idea and i think this is a draft that the best player available is much closer together than a definitive Bijan Robinson right. was the best player on the board. You could talk about Malik Neighbors and and Dallas Turner and and wow, we comparing that's pretty close, right? Yeah. So wide receiver, defensive back, defensive lineman, uh, edge rusher. Mm-hmm. Hold on, I mean before we leave, <laughs> we we have a guy here who has seen this Falcons team and called every game for yeah. that like twenty years, right? Yeah, twenty years. Twenty years. We can't leave without Dave Archer saying what he thinks the Falcons should do. Yeah, you can't just give it to us. No, it's it's funny. It's funny because I fall into the same boat that Tori does. I've been calling for this guy, this guy for the last (laughs) few years. I truly believe that when we get to late April, Atlanta is going to squeeze the trigger on what they think is the best defensive player on the board. No doubt. Which Mm -hmm. is either a corner, as you mentioned, or the the edge rusher um I, there's some really good interior defensive linemen there mm-hmm. uh when you begin to look at what that side of the ball needs landman surfacing troy anderson coming back you love your linebackers your safeties look really good you got one corner you're really excited about uh you got a young corner that's coming on is that a spot wow we'll be back <laughs> we'll come back for tory McElhaney and dj uh. shockley i'm dave archer this has been falcons audible presented by at&t like subscribe review at spotify itunes atlantafalcons.com youtube and by the way go to atlantafalcons.com because tory and everybody there Crush are doing it. an unbelievable job of keeping you updated thanks for being with us